Thanks for tuning in to watch The Ordinary Filmmaker. It's Sunday, October the 24th, 2021. Just two months away from Christmas, and it's a cold morning here, so it's certainly starting to feel like the Christmas season is on the way. Or if you're in the United States, you're probably thinking of Black Friday and Thanksgiving. We don't have a lot of news to cover today, but I do have a lot of presentations that are coming this week from major camera companies that you're going to want to be aware of, and I'm going to summarize those shortly. But as a bit of a warm-up, let's take a look at this slide. This chart shows sales from Japanese companies in the Japanese camera market. And as you can see, Sony's had a very good September. They've got about 43% market share. Unfortunately, though, OMD has been the loser in this segment, dropping from 25% a year ago down to about 10% now. And Canon, well, they've gone up a little bit, down a little bit, but year over year, they're not changed too much at around 20, 26%. They were around 24%, 25% about a year ago. So Sony's having a really, really good September and shouldn't be really any surprise. Let's take a look at this next slide and we can see that Sony's got four cameras in the top 10. Two of them are relatively recently announcements, the ZV-E10 and of course the A7C. And in second spot, we have the almost three-year-old A6400. I recently did a review of this camera alongside the Canon 90D because, well, they're in a similar price range. And yes, I know the 90D is a little bit more expensive, but when it goes on sale, it puts it right in that price bracket, which asks a lot of people, well, which camera is better? So that review looks at both cameras in detail. And it also asks the very simple question. In 2021, well, the end of 2021, are these cameras still relevant? Now, according to this slide here, we can see that, yes, it definitely are. At least in Japan, it's got the number two spot in sales. But another interesting story that this slide tells is, take a look at those two KISS cameras. Those are Canon cameras, and they are on the EFM mount. For a lot of you thinking like, well, isn't that mount dead? Do we really sell many of those cameras? Well, in Japan, the EFM mount is very, very popular, and it's called the KISS line, and they sell very, very well. And even in Europe, they sell well. So it doesn't look like Canon is going to get rid of them anytime soon. But as far as a refresh on that line, we don't really have much. And that's one of the reasons why we don't see Canon's numbers taking off. We only have one camera being announced this year, and that's the R3, which goes on sale basically with one month left to go in the year. What about the rest of the lineup? Now, in terms of their mirrorless line, their new R system, where all their developers go, development is going, there's nothing in that entry level to midline. We've got the R6 and the R5, the R3, which was recently announced, and these are all at the top end. Yeah, I, I know we have the RP and the R, but they're not aging well, and they weren't even aging that well when they were first announced. They weren't competing very well with the Sony cameras at the time. So there's a huge hole in Canon's lineup. And then, of course, there's Nikon. Nikon is coming out with the Z9. And this is where I want to talk to you about the announcements this week. So we've got a lot of big presentations coming out. The Nikon Z9 is rumored to be coming out this week on the 28th, according to Nikon Rumors. This is currently a rumor. We don't have an invitation. We don't have any scheduled web event. We have absolutely nothing other than Nikon Rumors says it is going to happen on the 28th, October the 28th, plus or minus a day. Let's just hope it's not October the 27th. Now, the reason for some of this confusion sometimes can be, well, the international dateline. Are they going to announce it in the US, Europe, or Japan? And that can mean the 27th in one country and the 28th in another, or the 28th in one and the 29th in another. It just depends on what time of day. But if you recall, this time last week, I was saying the same thing about the Sony a7 IV. Sony Alpha Rumor says it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's going to be this week. It's going to be on Thursday and nothing as of Sunday, but then sure enough, Monday comes around and we have an invitation and a scheduled event for the Sony a7 IV. So stay tuned. We might be getting the Nikon Z6 this week, a day after they drop their fourth teaser video on the Nikon Z9. I'm really looking forward to seeing that camera, but we have two other presentations. They're also this week, and they're also on the same day, October the 27th. Panasonic put out a slide not too long ago stating that they're gonna have a Lumix anniversary event. 20 years since the Lumix line came out. And I know what you're thinking. It's got to be the Panasonic GH6, right? Well, yes, I think it has to be because Panasonic has said the GH6 is happening this year. So I believe there's a 99.9999% chance 
that we're going to see the Panasonic GH6 at this announcement. If not, well, it's going to be as big a letdown as the Sigma event that we just had last week. Wow, I was expecting a whole lot more than we got in that one. In fact, I'm not even going to talk about that event. Now, the other event we have on the 27th, OMD, OM Digital, Olympus, or Olympus slash OMD. This is going to be their WOW event. Sorry, it's going to be their event about the WOW camera. Actually, no, it's going to be their event about a new camera that has WOW capabilities. Depending on where you listen on the internet, it's a WOW event, it's the WOW camera, it's a camera with WOW capabilities. Either way, this is supposed to be a new camera. And what's significant about this is this is the first camera that OMD is putting out since Olympus spun out their camera division to Japanese industrial partners. So I'm really looking forward to this. I don't think they're going to do anything like Nikon and just, just completely floor us with incredible specifications. I think it's going to be a decently specced camera, but I think they're going to take a different approach to the camera or how we take photos. Or I, I think it's going to address the workflow, and I think that's what I'm thinking about. I think and we'll just have to wait and see. So a couple of days away, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, and then as soon as I hear about an event, an invitation, a new camera, a new lens, anything you'll know, so subscribe, and it also helps this channel and gives me a pat on the back. It really does help this channel grow. So that's all I have for this week. I just wanted to give you a quick update on the beginning of a new week. We've got three, at least three major announcements coming this week. And of course, it's always nice to look at some camera statistics from Japan. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.